the voices required to be known by all individuals. Uh, please make note of the exits, which no smoking on premises, and there is a sign in sheet if you'd like to address the board. I'd also like to welcome Minnie Reagan. She's our student representative. Hello. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Thank you for getting up to her shortly. So we can start with the pledge. Um, yes, we have an invitation from Valley Central High School senior class. That will be team, which is Wednesday, next Wednesday, October October 19th at 2 p.m. in the high school courtyard. Uh, invitations for the board members were included in your food folder. So um, that's been an event they've been running, I think, since the school district or almost since its inception. It's a real nice chance to uh, talk with the seniors and the faculty and a very, uh, very casual and the food and decorations are always worth it. So if you can make it, that's uh, that's really a nice event. Um, just a reminder that the Orange County School Board's delegates meeting is Wednesday, November 3rd um, at 7 p.m. That's it for today. Commendations. Okay, the New York School Board Recognition Week, October 18th through October 22nd is School Board Recognition Week. This is the 30th year this event has been celebrated. This week is designated to commend school board members for their dedicated service to the children of New York State. Mm -hmm. So I want to thank everyone for your service. It's a hard job, a lot of different things. You guys are so dedicated. We appreciate your support and your hard work. We have a very small token of appreciation for uh, board members. Certainly take it down on your way up. Thank you. And you doesn't seem like enough, but we really do appreciate your hard work and your time tested for the good of our community. That's it. Thank you. Thanks. Next on the agenda, we have achievement presentations. So, good evening. This is uh, great. We've been doing this for many years where we would come before the board and uh, all the principals have an opportunity to tell you about some of their accomplishments and some of their goals moving forward. It was, I believe, how much time ago here? About six years ago, five years ago, 2016. 16, 17. Um, and we started our five-year plan. And at that time, we created a mission statement, which you, which you can read up there. But basically, the mission of Valley Central is to develop responsible, productive members of society and make sure that they are in a safe and innovative environment where they're motivated to think creatively and they're um, taught to communicate effectively and achieve excellence in partnership with not only our community, but also a knowledgeable and dedicated staff. So that is the mission of the Valley Central School District. Um, our aspiration in our five-year uh, plan was to be ranked in the top five of the school districts in Orange County on all key educational measures. Um, so I think when moving forward, we need to determine what we feel those key educational members, um, sorry, measures are because they're not always academic. Sometimes they're extracurriculars or they are what we're doing with social emotional. So I think moving forward, we need to really key in on, on what those are. Our goals for our district are to increase student achievement, to attract and retain a knowledgeable, dedicated staff, to serve as the cornerstone of our community, and to make sure that our facility, facilities are in great shape to support those three goals. So if John came in 2016, John Bell, he worked with board members and teachers and um, staff members to develop the plan. Uh, we rolled it out, and right now, this is the last year of our plan. Now, unfortunately, COVID kind of came in and wreaked havoc. So all of our baseline data that we determined five years ago, and then we were supposed to look at that data year by year, really basically in 2019, uh, we lost that baseline data. State testing wasn't um, given, uh, regents were not given. 
Um, our benchmarks now are absolutely not where they would have been, but right now we're trying to develop a baseline so that we can develop efficiency levels, um, realistic efficiency levels moving forward. So with that, uh, oh, we have the Valley Central High School. And I think that the best place is probably somewhere over there so that the public can see you on the camera. Well, terrific. Uh, thank you so much for having us. I'm Russell Burns. Michael Conklin, and I just want to welcome you all here tonight and thank you for having us to talk about uh, this many successes. As a district, we should be very proud with all that we've accomplished this year. Uh, one of the biggest things is, uh, ironically, just keeping our doors open from last year to this year, uh, being the, the biggest school and I believe the biggest district that has had the most in-person school days out of any school in Orange County. And we should be very proud of that because even just day to day, keeping our doors open, was kind of quite an accomplishment uh, because it took a lot of details and a lot of research and, and everyone uh, being on board. So everyone from our, our nurses, of course, to our teaching staff, um, especially our paraprofessionals, we relied upon our support staff more than ever to keep our, our buildings open. So uh, as we look at um, our successes this past year, bringing our number of students in the building um, every single day is quite an accomplishment. So. Uh, we, should, we, should all, uh, we should all pat ourselves on the back for that. Um, this year, we're very pleased to begin our uh, BCHS Institutes. And really what this is, we have so many wonderful electives as a school. We have nearly uh, over 90 electives as a building. And we want to tie our students to uh, college and career readiness and beyond. And our electives are really the key to, to hooking our students. We have um, a, a lot of our students do. Uh, we have a, a wide variety of electives, but we want our students to, be, to engage them. We want these to be engaging. We were excited to offer a new technology program in high school this year. Uh, we were able to uh, roll out our, our institutes. And, and what that means is the students will have basically a, a guide map when they begin going with high school, eighth grade to ninth grade, a pathway of what uh, programs they can take that will guide them through different programs such as business, or if they would like to go into uh, leadership and or education, um, fine arts, there are many different pathways they can take. So uh, what this is, this will lead to some sort of uh, recognition at graduation. We were also very successful this year in having homecoming. We were one of the first, if not the first, to have it um, in the county. And a lot of buildings, uh, Mr. Conklin and myself met with the districts uh, this week, talking about how they were going to be rolling our homecoming. We felt very confident having a, had a plan, implemented that plan, and successfully implemented it. So some of these things which are, in, in a normal year, which would be normal, uh, was a tremendous task, and we were all very proud of that. So uh, we we're thankful for, for everyone's help. We also had a powder puff game. That was my first time, my first experience with powder puff. It was quite a memorable experience, I have to say. Uh, pep rally, and anything that we've done, a nice conversation with the teacher today, uh, science teacher, Ms. Cleveland, she was just saying how much the students just enjoy coming to school, interacting with one another, and going about a normal routine. Any other year, uh, you would think, okay, yes, yeah, the, the drudgery, or it's just the, the norm, but our students are enjoying the norm right now, because it's, it's anything but, and they're thankful for even some of the simplest things that we've been able to have. So uh, the uh, homecoming football game, and uh, we were also to successfully um, do a ninth grade field trip to uh, Ring Homestead last week. Uh, nearly 250 kids out of our 390 ninth graders went, and uh, we had a tremendous time. They're doing uh, some uh, rope swings and climbing walls, and and uh, it was a tremendous success. The kids had such a great time. Our, our faculty, we just pull it together. And it was beautiful weather, uh, so our, our ninth graders really had a terrific time too. And that's all around social emotional learning because being a, being around each other, uh, interacting, um, doing doing things like encouraging one another across a, a high wire, um, those are all terrific skills, and there's terrific skills you can apply to life. So uh, we're we're introducing those activities and uh, working that plan um, every day of the year. So we're thankful for uh, a good start to the school year. Um, all right. Uh, thank you. Good evening, everybody. Uh, a little off topic here. I want to thank the Board of Ed for being understanding with the student representatives this year. 
Um, myself and Dr. Burns met with a bunch of students, five, and they were all very qualified. And this, you know, many being here tonight, it's just an example of the students we have coming into our building. So thank you for giving all of them an opportunity. We really think it's kind of a new approach, but we did sit down with all of them and they really had some good goals. So I'm very happy to see you here tonight and the other uh, students. So our goals and strategies, where are we headed, right? So our big focus is gonna be social emotional learning. Um, the kids that are coming into our doors every day, those 1,400 of them about, they're different, right? Um, they've been through the same thing we went through the last year and a half or whatever it is. So we need to make a strong focus on social emotional learning. That's gonna start with our Yale Ruler Initiative. Okay, so we're gonna do some things with that. Our last conference study had a, a big focus on what students are in our building and what can we do for them and how can we support them and tying in the Yale Ruler Initiative that we're doing. Cultural responsiveness, we're still continuing that. Okay, we want all students to feel welcome. All right, we want an engaging and welcoming learning environment, and that's what we're going to strive for every single day. We're also teaching them about character, building activities. Uh, we're doing that through field trips. Okay, we're doing class assemblies. And we're also, even tomorrow, we have a guest speaker coming um, who's going to deliver a positive message to our students. Um, he'll be in the gymnasium, and then we'll be streaming it also live to the classrooms as well. So we're looking forward to that. And there's more guest speakers coming. We're just looking for new ideas and delivering that positive message to our students. Um, we're also gonna take the Promethean boards, which I have to say our teachers have really run with this. Um, I know we're getting more training down the road, but they're really finding that these are very user-friendly. I mean, it's like having a flat screen TV in your classroom. So um, they're, they're using it to the best of their ability and they're looking forward to learning more and the students are interacting with them as well. Um, and then of course, we're just gonna keep expanding all of our instructional programs. I know yesterday we were talking about um, around an email I saw when we're sitting there. We're doing things around the county. We're gonna collaborate with schools around the county. And we're gonna, you know, how can we bring these programs to our students? You know, because we want them to come to our building and have what they need to be successful, whether that's college, you know, military, the workforce, whatever it may be. So uh, that's where we're heading and we're really looking forward to it. And thank you for having us. Thank And uh, next we have um, Alicia Cunella for Game Good evening. Thank you for having us here tonight. Um, it's always really exciting to come in and talk about all of our successes and to reflect on where we need to go in the future. So we're, really, we're grateful to have the opportunity to do that. Um, over the middle school, we've had um, some really big successes despite the last year and a half of struggle. Um, it's great to be able to look back and say, you know, we had all that controversy and all that or turmoil, but we did do some really great things too. Um, one of our successes um, to celebrate is that we updated all of our Chromebooks for our staff and our students. So every um, student in the middle school has a touch screen um, Chromebook laptop or um, tablet combination where the screens flip over. Um, those are really great, especially for our math program, um, where they're using Cami a lot, one of our programs that we use in the middle school. And those touch screens really help the kids to manipulate um, their math. So that's a great success for us. Um, also to celebrate the fact that we have all these new educational materials and mastering new technologies. Uh, you know, COVID was not all that bad in a lot of ways for education. It really sort of forced us to come out of our comfort zones a little bit and to really explore some new ideas and new technologies that have been able to stick around now that we're back in person. We um, instituted at the end of last year some new eighth grade celebrations, including our drive-through celebration, which was really widely accepted. Um, I think the parents and the students and the staff too had a great time as the kids drove through um, in front of middle school back in June and waved to their teachers and got all of their goodies. Um, it was really a great time for everybody who attended. Over the summer, we instituted our first SEL summer camp for grades six through eight. We had students come in for um, one of two sessions of an SEL camp where they got to do a lot of hands-on experience. It was brought, it was written. Um, curriculum was written by our staff and then executed by the staff from not only the middle school but also the elementary schools. And they came in for a week and did a lot of hands on activities, um, reflection, um, just trying to boost their spirit up. We really we tried to be selective with the students who really sort of needed that extra boost. Maybe students were a little reluctant to come into the building. Um, some school anxious students attended the camp and it was really interesting to see them come in um, and sort of come out of their shell a little bit in advance of the new school year. We are really excited that we're able to bring back, bring back our clubs and activities this year. Um, it really felt like something was missing last year in the middle school without having those in-person activities. Um, it's really important not only that students are having that academic component, but also that extracurricular component. 
component. Um, things like the Pops Concert and Music Department are really important things where the, the, the students are really learning skills outside of the traditional classroom. So we're really excited to have those back. And like Mr. Brown said, just having everybody back in the building five days a week. There's an energy in the building that's been missing for the last year or so, and we're really glad to see those, those faces. We know they're smiling behind those masks when they come in every day. As far as our strategies and goals for the upcoming year, like the high school, we're also really focused on those SEL goals for this year. We know the students are coming in um, struggling. They really are having a hard time settling back into the school routine. Many of them have been off the team for over a year. So just trying to get them back in our doors, get them comfortable, understanding what they need to do while they're in the building. And that really falls along with that social emotional learning that's so important every day. We're doing that with both in class programs and also after school programs. We're working to institute a homework club where students can stay after. They'll be mentored um, by National Junior Honor Society students, by faculty members. Um, and we're also looking for some partnerships from Mount St. Mary College, who was a program that the middle school ran several years ago. Um, we're trying to bring some of those components back again to give the students some opportunity, maybe students that just need a little extra time in the building after school um, to be able to offer that opportunity. For being flexible with guidelines and changes. You know, that's a huge struggle. Every day something changes. Every day something else is new or improved or different. And just trying to stay flexible and being able to go with the flow is really a struggle um, in these times. We're trying to maintain consistency, but also trying to be flexible. That's hard for adults, but it's super hard for the students. We're also working real hard on the all roller training and implementation. We also spent some time on the half day last week. Um, starting to get our staff acquainted with emotions and why it's so important to understand where our emotions come from and the impact that emotions have on our well-being, on our work, our play. Um, we spent about an hour and a half, about 45 minutes a session with three sessions, um, talking about those topics. And we're going to be exploring that more throughout the year on our half day and our superintendent conference day in um, November. And then finally, um, something that I'm very proud of, we um, changed the middle school master schedule this year. We met with a consultant, thank you to the board for that, um, back in the, in the winter time and in the spring, and we redeveloped our schedule for this year, where instead of um, having our electives scattered throughout the day, we tried to streamline them by grade level. And the advantage to that is that students are interacting with students of their own grade level, but it also gives the teachers time to be able to work together in teams, to plan, to communicate, to collaborate. Um, and we're very proud of that. Uh, one of our challenges is just to work through some growing things that we're experiencing this year and then move forward with that in the coming year. So we're very, very excited about those changes and the opportunities that they're giving us. So thank you to the board for all of your support throughout this last year or so. It's been challenging, but at the same time, it's been a growth experience for both the staff and the students at the middle school. Thank you. So some of our successes and celebrations, um, I wanted to go back to what Mrs. Ganell was saying regarding how this struggle the past year and a half, and I thought it would be important to let you know that out of five um, students that we had that were seniors that past year, four students graduated, two went to SUNY Orange, one entered the world work for a course and one um, to pick out your before attending student orange. The one student though I'm happy to report that did not graduate in working in collaboration with the high school is um, re-enrolled back in the district and will be graduating in January. Mm -hmm. He's on a good path to graduate. Um, another success of ours was because of our program, we really needed to be in five days a week. So I really thank you all for that support. And we had a very nice balance of in-person and remote learners. Um, our teachers and paraprofessionals did a wonderful job live streaming. We had we were in five days, and we were able to keep students involved um, who were remote learners and um, in-person learners. We actually had ten full-time uh, remote learners through this last year. Um, Ninety percent of them were present um, online for more than eighty percent of the time, and we had two that had a hundred percent attendance for the entire year. Um, moving forward, we're still doing a lot of improvements um, over at ALC to make it more of a friendly environment. Um, we were happy that we were able to have our ALC barbecue again this year. 
So we're looking at doing some more landscaping outside, maybe doing um, um, creating our own outdoor classroom in the back. So we are looking at that as something that um, thank you for the support from Mr. Kaplan and Mr. Schmidt and moving that forward. We've also begun providing social emotional learning lessons through the Young Ruler program to all of our students in our middle school and high school program. So that's already been implemented and it's started to take place. We will be working with the staff at the November 2nd conference day just to kind of give a little more training in that area. We're also moving forward with the social equity community. Um, and we were able to this year, electives are, are very important and it's sometimes difficult for us to provide um, a vast scope of electives just because we're not at the high school and we only have one content area teacher. But we were able to provide um, career financial management this year to all our high school students that um, are able to take that course and expand it to our eighth graders. So they'll be able to start the high school with one um, high school credit next year. So thank you. So next is John Salonado from Berea. He cannot be here with us tonight. I'm hoping that this works. It's not going to. I have to do that. Well, if it doesn't, I can just. The one thing you're going to notice about the elementary is that the board has been asking for years is that for them to all be consistent. And you're going to see from their presentations that they are all working on very common goals. So, Mr. Salamanca. Good evening. Residents, administrators, and guests. My apologies for not being in attendance tonight in person. Maria Elementary School has recognized a number of successes and celebrations since the establishment of the district strategic plan in 2017. With careful planning, our literacy and math consultants were able to embed professional development during the school day with minimal loss of instruction. In 2019, our slide books were replaced with new concrete designed to allow accessibility for the physically disabled. Along with the concrete redesign, our entire parking lot, bus lanes, and playground were resurfaced. New crosswalks were created for safe crossing of the parking lot to the building. Also, in the summer of 2019, an Eagle Scout, Matt Walker, created an outdoor classroom that is at the back of Maria's property just beyond the swings. Students from all grades have enjoyed utilizing this space. Maria is happy to be part of a common vision for ELA and math. This was established in concert with the district in the 2018-2019 school year. The STEAM program for fourth grade students started several years ago as an after-school program. Now, with the help of Mr. Leo and the other computer teachers, we are happy to offer a STEAM class to all our students during the school day. This year, we created a before school academic intervention services program. This program is for students who are struggling with the mastery of skills necessary to achieve grade level success. This program started on October 4th. We will monitor the success of the program as we move forward. During the summer of 2021, we were happy to have a summer school program for students who did not achieve grade level success. This is the first time summer school has been opened in many years. Through the hard work of the lead teachers and the teachers of the program, students completed their coursework and moved on to the next grade. Finally, Maria has self, eight self-contained special education classes that often integrate cooking simple dishes into their curriculum. Ms. Ryder had the idea of extending a countertop in one of our small classrooms to allow for these projects. To our surprise and delight, Mr. Schmidt and Mr. Conklin gave us an entire kitchen with a stove, dishwasher, microwave, and refrigerator. Mr. Schmidt told us that he and Mr. Conklin wanted to do it right to help the students have great learning experiences. To them, we are most grateful. As for our goals and strategies for the coming school year, we will continue with social-emotional learning through the Yale Ruler Program. 
Our social equity committee will be working with Mr. Curlin and Dr. LeBlanc to create awareness of social equity among students and staff. The RISE program targets second grade students who need specialized help in reading. This is a pilot program this year. Finally, Maria is the only elementary building piloting Tang math in all grades. The techniques teachers are learning to teach math are already proving most useful. Water comes as the year progresses with these new methods. Thank you for your kind attention and have a pleasant evening. And next we have Mr. McDonough, Dr. McDonough from Eastwood. Good evening. Uh, like Ms. Saratori said, a lot of what you do tonight will be repeated, so I'll try not to repeat too much. Uh, we uh, at East Coltenham had the luxury of adding a school garden patio to our existing school garden, to uh, our existing school garden, obviously, uh, through an Eagle Scout project from Jonathan Jurgens. That has proven to be very successful for us in terms of go outside, enjoy some sunshine, sit near the garden without having to worry about sitting in the garden, and do some reading and some writing, drawing. Uh, we also have our STEAM classes, K5, uh, just like Mrs. Solomon mentioned. Um, and again, I don't want to repeat everything, but we are a one to one school with Chromebooks as well. And that is probably one of the only benefits that we saw through the last year and a half. We are now in a position we are a one-to-one -one school with technology. Uh, I don't want to give you the wrong impression, though. In our classrooms, teachers are not relying solely on the Chromebooks. They are a resource for them. We are still doing education the way we always did before. These are just a tool in the classroom. Uh, but they are very beneficial, and thankfully, I know we don't want to think about it, but if we have to go that route, we are ready to work. Uh, we have many improvements in the building over the last year. Thanks to Mr. Schmidt and Mr. Conklin. We had some dangerous situations in the front of our building uh, near our bus uh, routes. Students would walk from the parent parking lot towards the front door, and the sidewalk there was very narrow, giving them a very narrow area to walk without having to worry about the bus next to them. When I mentioned this to Mr. Conklin and Mr. Schmidt, they came over, took a look at it, and said, Yes, absolutely. They put us a nice pad into the grass, and there is a much safer situation there. Uh, we've also uh, replaced our front steps, which were cracking and provided a very dangerous situation for us. Again, Mr. Conklin and Mr. Schmidt came over, took a look at it, and gave us very nice steps, we think, for those. Uh, for next year, for this year, we are hoping to, I met with uh, another Eagle Scout who's looking to put a pavilion over our existing patio near the garden which would give us uh, more opportunity to get students out and learning. Um, Nick Zika, hopefully he'll have that underway in the near future and we'll break ground on that. So I know he's working very hard to raise the funds. It's a, a huge undertaking and uh, I wish him all the best. Hope we get that going soon. We are reinvesting in ruler equity and PLCs. Uh, and the way I describe this to my teachers is don't look at these as three different things. PLCs, encompass ruler and equity. These are, are ways to help students. Uh, if we can connect to a student through their social emotional or their identification as a person, then we help them to learn and their scores go up. So this, just like an IEP or a 504, is a way of addressing a need for a student. If our curriculum isn't reaching a student, we should be identifying them through the PLC and implementing strategies from our special education background, our regular education background, as well as equity and ruler strategies. We, uh, a couple of years ago, saw a spike in bus referrals, and uh, Mrs. Raker, our student assistance counselor, and I took a look at that and tried to find a way to address that issue. We spoke with Mr. Heidemann, who has a PBIS program in his building, and we came up with the Bus of the Month program, rewarding students who do the right thing. And in the year that we did that, just before the year before we had to close, we saw a sharp decline in our bus referrals. Uh, as we came back to the building this year, we're starting to see those numbers in, increase again. So we have started uh, on the 1st of October, was our first day of bus of the month. We had the drivers in. Uh, Mrs. Marshawn came over with the bus company, and we discussed the bus of the month program, and we are underway again hoping to see a sharp decrease in those referrals again. 
We are continuing to expand all opportunities in the garden. Uh, students uh, really enjoy getting out there. They do measurements, they do drawings, they do readings. It's a fantastic thing. Uh, the pictures here, actually. And we are very excited about expanding our extracurricular opportunities. Uh, tonight, I believe, our last meeting, there were two new uh, charters that came to you, the EC Echoes and the Boom Wacker Clubs. Um, Echoes, the EC Echoes is a chorus, and if you haven't seen Boom Wackers, come on over and check these things out. They are tubes cut to different lengths. They, when you hit them on the floor, they make different sounds. They're fantastic. The kids love them. They make some pretty good music with them. Uh, we also have a Crazy 8 program, which is a math program after, before and after school. When we first started this, we had a good reception with the students. Uh, as of tonight, we have 70 students. It keeps growing on us. Uh, we actually have a wait list for students to get into this program. We're building up just about 370 students trying to get into the K-5 uh, Crazy 8 program. It's a fun and engaging program where students use manipulatives to solve math problems and work together collaboratively. Uh, and then there's a day where they have fun wrapping each other in toilet paper and counting the squares. And it's a lot of fun. The kids have a great time. Included in that uh, is the before program, the before, before school program that all the buildings are doing Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And we also have the RISE program. So we have many programs in place and many more that we're hoping to get started in the next couple of years to give students more of an opportunity after school, as well as their education day during the school day. Um, like I said, I think you hear a lot of the repeats from the next two gentlemen, but thank you very much for all your support and to the central office for everything they've done. Thank you. Uh, Again, I'll try to just move quickly through the things that we're all working on together because we do meet regularly to try to stay on the same page. Um, I think one thing we really need to celebrate though is obviously last year was a tremendously difficult year for everybody, but the teachers really, they basically learned how to teach from scratch all over again. So I think that's a huge celebration that they did it successfully um, and they, we need to celebrate the kids' efforts too. Obviously there was some pitfalls and struggles along the way, but as a whole, I think the students and the staff really stepped up and did everything they could to make it as successful as possible. So I think that's a huge celebration for the next year. Um, being a village school, we try to have strong ties to the community. So there's lots of things that we do within the village of Montgomery. And um, the opportunities were not tremendous last year, but we tried to do whatever we could. We do planting in the village. So all those flower pots that you see in the village, typically the students plant them with the teachers, but last year the teachers planted them. Um, so there wasn't a lot of intermingling of the students. Um, we had a strong tie with our PTA. Although we were not able to do all the tremendous things that we typically do, um, they still were able to have fundraisers. The PTA was very involved still. They purchased lanyards for the teachers, um, shirts for the students, um, in an effort to be able to you know, feel like a, a family and, and a community as a, as a whole in Montgomery. Um, I put this next one on there, the Racial and Social Equity Committee. Obviously, it's a celebration that our building was able to start doing this, but I was thinking more because I'm on the district committee. I think as a district, I think this is a huge celebration because um, we spent a full year putting this program together and meeting and establishing a framework to move forward um, to expand our inclusion of all racial and social members of our community. So I mean I think that is a huge celebration for the district as a whole, not just the one coming in. Um, and again, the summer school program was a huge celebration. We were able to bring quite a few kids in to spend some time in the classroom over the summer, have fun, continue the learning, and you know, avoid that summer slot that people are so aware of. Um, and we're having a pretty good turnout right now in the before school AIS program. We have probably anywhere from six to ten students. Um, in every grade level and probably about close to 20 in first grade because um, you know, they have limited access to school as a kindergartner and we wanted to get as many first graders in as possible. So in terms of uh, goals and strategies for this year, like the rest of the gentlemen have talked about, um, social emotional learning, Yale Ruler, um, we just spent some time in our half day PD talking about how to 
transition this into the classroom and really get engaged on students' emotions on a daily basis so we can better communicate with them. Um, we're going to continue to do racial and social equity work. Um, when Robin McMillan was still teaching here, we kind of started this process at Montgomery, purchasing read-alouds where kids can see themselves in books. We've continued that process throughout the past three years. So we have a pretty large um, library of books with all kinds of diverse characters. So I think we're doing pretty, pretty well in that area. Um, big thing for me is MTSS, our tier one interventions, because we have a number of students who were limited educational opportunities just from lack of access to being in school last year. So we have kids with deficits. So just tier one interventions are essentially, um, how are we differentiating to meet the needs of all our kids? Um, and you know, we just had a training with Jim Wright, and he said basically our before school AIS program was like a huge step in the right direction in trying to meet the kids that would not typically be struggling, but might have some gaps because of last year's different instruction. Um, and again, the RISE program, we're implementing in Montgomery Elementary as well. And one thing I think is very important for the kids this year is reinstating the special extracurricular program like Odyssey the Mind, Drama, the After School Steam program. We're also doing creative math at Montgomery, you know, concerts, family math nights, all those things that really draw families to school and kids to school. You know, obviously we're going to do them in a different way. Um, you know, we'll have a Halloween dance outside on the blacktop this year instead of having it in the gymnasium. But we're going to try to get those things that excite kids about being in school. Back in, so, thank you. And last up, please, we have Mr. Heideman from Walden. I could just say ditto, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, no, they all did a great job, so if I can close this out, I'm right here. But just like the other schools, we have great attendance at summer school. We even saw a lot of improved benchmark levels. Um, the PBIS data that we had seen up until COVID hit. Show, uh, showed us a very steady decline in um, our, our discipline referrals. A lot of that also had to do with Mr. Buchman, my assistant principal. We brought a lot of consistency to that position in regard to discipline. Um, but PBIS was, was making it a place where kids really want to be and earn positive rewards. This year we are bringing it back into the start with recess and lunch, and next month um, on the buses as well as the long swing. The PTO donated a Gaga ball pit. I don't know if you've ever seen it or used it, but man, it's fun. Uh, the kids try and get me in there, but I have a bad back and I got to be careful. But they have a blast. We also have a beautiful stage backdrop. So that's a wonderful thing. AIS programs, off to a great start. Uh, last year we had a lot of, uh, we didn't have uh, too many quarantines in, in, in Walden. So our teachers, our staff all did a great job with our safety protocol. Um, again, we have a STEAM program um, and all of that, and as I said, we survived by working together. That was, that was huge. Um, this year, so a couple of our goals and strategies. So we have to assess and support approximately 50 new students entering Walden from out of district. That does not include our kindergarten students. Those are one to five students in out of district that we've never had before. So that's, that's presenting a challenge in that. We are coming up with strategies in order to help and assist these students, get proper assessment data, and make sure that we differentiate, differentiate instruction appropriately for all of those new students as well. Um, it was a great half day last week. Our teachers are now integrating ruler in their classroom, so we made that transition from talking about it to doing it. And it's a great start, and all of our teachers have bought into that. I do a great job with that. Um, the, the RISE program, our social equity Committee is doing great, and we're looking forward to providing more professional development besides just our, our building team. We're talking with Zelle, Justin Blanc, Dr. LeBlanc, and the central office so that we can really help inform all of our, our staff to deal with these complicated topics. Um, in 2026, which is not too long, you know it goes fast, it is the 100th anniversary of Walden Elementary School. So that is very exciting. We have some work to do to get prepared for that, um, but we're really looking forward to that. And finally, I didn't put it on the slide, but in Walden, we have such a great relationship with the mayor of Walden, the village hall, um, 
everyone down from the village manager, director of parks and recreation. Our police department has just been phenomenal in keeping our building safe and assisting us whenever we need it. So um, the village of Walton is a special place and we're all happy to be there. And thank you very much. Thanks, Greg. Well, I just want to say thank you for coming. It was great. And um, I know you probably all tune into our meetings every week. But in case you don't, you know, <laughs> the board and the community really do appreciate all your work and your teams and for the last year and a half. So uh, if you haven't heard it enough, please share that feedback with them. And uh, it didn't get on the list. Thank you. All right. Uh, next is the proposed consent agenda. I get a motion to approve. Move forward. Second. Diane, discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? All zero. Thank you. Next, we will move to our student representative, who's been waiting very patiently. So, Katie, thank you for joining us. To just introduce yourself a little bit. Nice to see you. First, thank you. I'll stand up. <laughs> Hello guys, how are you? My name is Vincenza Ragon. I go by Vita. That's just a nickname. A little bit about me is I go to MOSIS from Walt Coast and Security Academy. I am the talent commander of my school's JRTC program, and I'm a volunteer fireman at my family fire department. So the topic that I will be discussing is my JR is the JRTC and community service within the school districts. I have four points. But uh, also as well as goals, excuse me. And I would really love to focus on medical training for all of the students at either high schools, elementary schools, middle schools, wherever may, that may be. I know there is a mandatory class in gym where you can learn how to use AED and do CPR. But I don't feel like there's enough opportunities for students, maybe like me, who didn't have opportunities to join the uh, fire department, to join the EMS, EMT, and things along those lines. Because I really feel that not only that this can benefit them in their future, but in everyday life. Maybe they'll be at ShopRite or Walmart and they can just help someone out. As well as a community fair, maybe kind of like a college fair, but for the community. Uh, we'll have tents, which will be outside, of course. We'll have tents of different volunteer opportunities for students. Uh, this may be our local nursing homes, food distribu distribution, and our AARP. Um, all different types and different fundings. And then our better citizenship visits. This will be the JRTC officers, their volunteer club officers, and even the Montgomery Fire Department can participate. And we can visit the middle school and elementary schools, and even high school classes, and we can motivate the young students to become better citizens. Even to show them how to get involved, even at a young age. Because many kids may not understand that at 16 years old, you can become a fireman. At 17 years old, you can become an interior fire. Uh, go into the building, excuse me. <laughs> so I just wanted um, to go to different classrooms and show the students that they can help out whenever they can. Different students who have different likings, you know, that may be technical sciences, physical abilities, or even like history. There's so many different opportunities that students may not understand that they have in this district, and then we can open their eyes to them. The last thing I have is a Jared to see Fest, where a day where BC students gather as teams to compete for prizes with different physical fitness tests, town of Montgomery history, old world and history, and technical computer sciences. Each grade level will have different competitions that anyone can be a part of. Local businesses and services can sponsor certain aspects and even be involved with coaching these teams or being in the audience. The audience will consist of the whole district, including family, friends, teachers, and local business vendors. And it's just a way to get the communities together and have fun. I don't know about you guys, but I love doing physical fitness tests and competitions and see uh, if you can win or not. And I just feel like this is a great opportunity to have fun and even, even to gather around and have an opportunity like this, even after such a hard year that we have. And I believe that is all that I have. <laughs> Thank you very much for this opportunity. Great job. Great job. Thank you. So you're more than welcome to stay if you'd like, or if you'd like to leave, you can do that as well. All right, uh, next we'll do the superintendent report. Okay, thank you. Um, just, uh, I want to mention something. Uh, 
uh, Jordan was mentioned about ALC, and um, it was so nice to see that uh, those kids graduate. And that's the beauty, not just that, but that is certainly that um, value added. I also want to mention we had our first, every year of hiatus, we had our first second cup of coffee in September at uh, ALC. I know people are busy and I don't expect that you can make it, but if you get a chance, uh, next one's in October. Um, I don't know. That's okay. It's all right. We, get but it in we had such a nice, uh, about half hour, we had uh, two parents uh, show up just to tell us how much they love the program and how it's benefited their students and stuff. It was really a nice morning. And uh, um, we usually have people show up. Once in a while, you have somebody that asks a question about something that's and you direct them and stuff like that. It was a great morning, and uh, the kids, we had a lot of provisions, small schools, so we were able to share some of that with the kids and, and the uh, teachers and support uh, staff and that. So it was a nice day. I just wanted to mention that. Thank you for your hospitality, uh, Georgia. Um, I was up at the um, Council Superintendent's Wall Summit, and just a couple quick things. One thing I'll tell, I want to mention to the board, uh, Chuck Diedrich started it off, uh, he's the president, uh, superintendent, entire superintendent for 22 years. And the first thing he talked about was really our business officials. And he wanted to tell everyone that his business official was back at the office because if you have a good business official, they often take the time when everybody's out doing their things and they can't get interrupted to get things done. And uh, he said, if you have a good business official, hold on to my grim death because there's, there's not a lot out there and that was also segue with transportation so i just want to thank uh, say to the board and the public you know thank brad um he's done a ter terrific job with uh the budget part certainly and uh it's been a full-time job with the transportation and we're not perfect in transportation but when you hear the stories and the week before i went to um uh, Albany or Saratoga. I was at my uh, first superintendent's meeting that had been that was in uh, in person, and it was a, about a two and a half hour meeting, and most of it was about transportation, the problems and the challenges of our transportation. So, Brad, thank you for your good work and continue doing that. Um, the other thing I just want to piggyback on Mary, I mentioned I went to one of uh, one of the breakout sessions was school district superintendent for 15 years that was the title of that Kasaki Athens which is I think one uh, exit above uh, Solis, uh I think exit 21 and he talked about different things in the, in the uh, superintendency but the one thing he mentioned and Mary Ann touched upon it tonight was about a, a five-year plan about looking at aspirations not just uh, academically and uh, I asked Mary Ann if she would take some time and we would review some of the things that they're doing up there and see how beneficial maybe and invite uh, either have a, a screen meeting with them to get some ideas with our high school uh, principals and things. So that's something that we will certainly benefit and a place that we could use as a resource. But we're very interested in expanding what we want to do for kids and milestones as far as social that's it. And again, thank you to the board uh, for all your service. Um, we really, really appreciate it. you here tonight. We, people in the room, know that you can't do this job at any level of success unless you have support uh, at the top. And we appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Ms. Sarator, for doing the instruction. So I don't have a lot. Um, but what I did want to say is when I was going through the slides today and then listening to all of you today, and I mean it sincerely, like this is like a really stellar administrative team. Um, but even more so than that, like we are a very united district because if you look like, for, I think it's the first time I've really so clearly seen it from kindergarten all the way up to 12th grade, is that our initiatives are very common. We're all on the same path, whether it be yeah, ruler, social, emotional, or whether it be um, adding opportunities for children or whether it be racial and social equity work, our committees that we're working on, every single administrator in this building is really working towards common goals for kids. And when there's consistency and there's unity, that is that it's excellent for our kids and for our parents. So I do want to thank you. I think that it's outstanding that in the midst of COVID and quarantines and learning about uh, 
social distancing and COVID protocol that we were able to pull up um, a summer school program and four school program, racial equity committees, social emotional programs. And you know, you didn't even mention that you're going to be adding a computer assisted design course in the springtime. And I know that the middle school had added numerous electives, engaging electives for their kids. So in the midst of all that insanity, the fact that you guys were able to like add opportunities for kids is just, it makes me very proud because our sole goal is always to improve the lives of the kids and the families that we serve. And you guys absolutely do an amazing job with that. So it's, you know, it's good. Uh, I think good things are happening in the land of the Vikings. And then the last thing I have for the board is just that right now we are currently um, planning our November 2nd conference day. We just finished our half day. So again, all of those things that um, our administrators have talked about today to you are things that we're going to be centering our PD on in November 2nd. We should have um, our schedules firmed up two days before conference. <laughs> um, we are waiting for BOCES to come out with their plan um, to see if there's anything we would like to add to that, but as of yet, BOCES has not done that. So as soon as we have that, we will get everything together and we'll have that ready to go. Thank you. I'll be brief as well. I'd just like to thank the administrators here. I thought your presentations were awesome. And uh, it's like we say all the time. I mean, I think we're a no-nonsense district. Your presentations echo that. It's here's the things we're doing. Here's the things we plan on doing. And it's just right down to it. So I mean, appreciate that. I appreciate all your hard work. Um, and just to talk about the high school, um, our homecoming events that we had the week of September 27th through October 2nd went well. Uh, we had our pep rally and our powder puff game on Wednesday, followed by the varsity football game on Friday night. We had the homecoming dance on Saturday night. Our high school administration did a, in a very creative move, moved the homecoming dance outside. Um, and it proved to be a very popular decision amongst the students and staff to put a lot of wonderful things about how that went. Uh, so thank you for everybody that was involved in that. Thank you for all your hard work. Um, we have several administrators, nine in fact, to attend a diversity recruiting training webinar sponsored by NEMNET um, on, on Tuesday, uh, October 19th, as well as Tuesday, November 2nd. And in order to comply with the New York State COVID testing mandate, we are working with Affinity, we continue to work with Affinity and plan on testing and plan to begin testing soon. When we begin testing, all of our employees will be notified with our, with our testing to begin procedures that must follow. Any employee who provides proof of vaccination will be exempt from testing. And I'd also, with that, I'd also like to thank our district nurse coordinator, Connie Griffin, uh, as well as our RNs and our LPNs our school nurse, our school nurses who play a major role in our logistics of testing, and all of our nurses have done an incredible job with the challenges this pandemic has thrown at them. So we're very fortunate to have Georgia, who oversees the nurses, Connie, and their team. So thank you. So thank you. Business official report. All right. Thank you, Mr. President. So I'm actually going to yield some of my time to uh, Mr. Stoddard. So Mr. Stoddard's here tonight to talk to the board. Uh, Mr. Stoddard is with the Hudson Valley Labor Trades. And he's also brought, uh, brought some other folks here with us. Um, as you guys know, we have uh, a lot of work absolutely. Uh, coming up. We have about $14 million uh, worth of work uh, that was approved by the voters at the uh, uh, budget vote in May. So the, while the, the bulk of the work is site work in front of the high school, middle school complex, we also do have the construction of a new restroom facility along with uh, ventilation improvements in the pool, ADA work in the uh, uh, high school auditorium, and uh, they're here tonight to talk about some apprenticeship opportunities um, that may be beneficial to uh, the district and uh, our students. Thank you, Mr. Compton. Uh, thank you, ladies and gentlemen of the board. Is it all right if I hand these out? Or? Absolutely. Yeah. And um, we're here tonight just to request that the school board consider the, the use of apprentice language for your next capital project. I brought also associates with me. I brought Matt Ross from the Carpenters along with Jessica from the Carpenters and Jeff 
got from the laborers, and they're, they've got programs, and I think the board will be very interested in the programs that we have to order, or we have to offer the students, your students and the, and the young men and women from, from the area. So real quick, I'm not, I'm not gonna take up too much of your time because I really want you to hear the programs that the Bill and Trace offers the graduating students, not only here, but in the general area. And what, just so you understand, apprentice language is language that was put together, it's a program put together by the state of New York and it's, and it's governed by the Department of Labor. And what an apprentice is, and let's say for the trades, I'll use my trades as an example, as the iron workers, um, it's a earn while you learn program. They go to work during the day and they go to school during the night. It's just like yours too. It goes from June or from June to or September to June, and they go two nights a week, and they're at a, a reduced rate as an apprentice. So what that means is when they start out there, and I have a four-year program. So they start out at, at first year rate at 50% of prevailing rate, which would be a cost savings to the school district, of course. Then they go to 60% for second year, 70%, 80%, and then they graduate to nine uh, to journeyman or mechanic status, and that is full rate with benefits. Now, what does that do for these young men and women? This is what we're all we're trying to partnership with you guys is giving some of our students an alternative to college. We get that we want them all to go to college too. We, we're not speaking against college, but there is going to be some of your students that are going to choose a different path, and we're giving them a path. And by going through the trade schools that we have and the programs that these people are going to about to explain to you, it makes them, it gives you your community a skilled, trained, local workforce. And for, without me going any further, I'd just like to introduce to the board, Matt Ross from the Carpenters. Hi, thank you for taking the time to let us come here and speak about this. Um, what my partner over here, Matt, was talking about with the apprenticeship language, what, the, what we're asking for in that partnership with the apprenticeship language is an opportunity for us to secure work for our apprentices. And you, with this language, with your school, with your bid off specs, would be looking to use contractors that promote education, that promote training from within. So our language, like what we have in Orange County, has a has to be a New York State approved apprenticeship program, and it has to have a graduation rate of 30% or higher in order to qualify to bid a job. So what's that, you know, we're asking an education foundation to work with the trades to help us educate our members. Now, when we educate our members, who are they? Our apprentices? They're basically our high school graduates because we're a local entity. So we, you know, you can't join our locals unless you live in the area. So you're already a local. So what's, what's that mean? That means that our young people coming out of high school, now I've taken some time to look at Valley Central as a school and your demographics. And I have to say, I'm really impressed with where you stand in the state as a school, especially on your diversity level. Uh, I believe you're almost 30% diverse as a school. You have, um, let's see here. What? I'm sorry, I was putting this paperwork together in the car and looking at it with my glasses and I'm an old person and <laughs> I can't do that anymore. Um, but what I've noticed with the school is where we can align and work together is with your career and technical situation with your school. Um, looking at from the New York State um, School of Education data sheet, looking at your career and technical education and your career and development or development occupational studies is by these standards are non-existent. So what the carpenters have come up with and what the other trades are looking to get on board with is a high school program, all right, where 
we come in and introduce a program to your school. But the advantage of our program now is for your students, it's going to give them one step up. I can't call it a direct entry because you still have to come in and interview and we have to go through the Department of Life Labor. But our program is already approved by the Department of Labor, so we can give high school students credit towards our application, our interview process, and that carries over to the other trades too. So by taking this program, it also opens them up to the other 29 trades that we have. Now, I looked at your demographics as far as your students, all right, and your college readiness, all right, and what I've seen is for all your students, and this is broken down by race and ethnicity, um, for, you know, what they're calling white, 64% of your student makeup, 7 out of 10 of them are prepared for college. Your Hispanic, which is 21% of your students, 4 out of 10 are ready for college here. And if you look at your other numbers with your ratio of students that are going to four-year schools, which I believe is somewhere in the range of 65%, I have it in here, but I'm trying to run this off memory because of time. And 30, 30 some odd percent are ready for two year schools are going there. All said and done, that adds up to about 82% of your classes. All right, so that leaves 18% that aren't college ready or aren't going to college. Where is that 20% going? And what our issue is, is why aren't they coming to the trades as an alternative? Now, one of the things we've always seen is a disconnect between skilled labor and education, because sometimes it's looked at as that's the stop at education. So we're trying to bridge that gap with the carpenters right now. And right now we're involved with Orange County Community College and SUNY Sullivan College to get our apprenticeship program accredited for college credit so we can set up a two year degree, which would be in conjunction with the high school program. But our biggest problem is with these high school programs, we need the support of the schools and that's where the apprenticeship language plays into effect on that. Now, as far as apprenticeship language for the quality of people that you're gonna get to bid your jobs, who do you want to bid your jobs? Do you want companies coming in here, using local labor, using our you know, students, our graduates, or do you want companies coming in here that don't promote education, that wanna keep their employees where they are and don't wanna train them to the next level? So that's the relationship we're asking for with you when it comes to apprenticeship language. So it's more of a, you know, to me, it's an ethics thing. You know, we're asking the Education Foundation to help us secure education for us so we can continue our trades. I don't think it's a big lift. Uh, cost factor wise, it's a savings because if you bring in a company that doesn't have a New York State approved apprenticeship program, they have to pay everyone on that job the full rate of a journey, regardless of their skill level. So when you have apprenticeship language on your bid specs, you're bringing in the best value because you're going to allow trades to come in that have apprenticeship programs where New York State says for you can go to one to one ratio on your first two. After that, it's one to four. So for every fifth person, you're saving 50 percent. And on the jobs that you just spoke about here with the magnitude of the dollar amount, you're talking for all trades. Anywhere from 50 to 100 guys could be on this job or members. So now take what 20% of that, there's your cost savings right off the bat. I mean, I'm the carpenter, all right? I'm not, you know what I mean? But that's simple math where the cost savings in and then the benefit that you have. I mean, what, what better would it be for you to walk in to work and see one of your former students in a career, a career that at the end of the day, what we're here for is retirement. I know kids don't look at that, but that's what we look at. What we offer at the end of your career is a retirement with dignity. You know, that's what we offer. And we also, during that, we provide because the average income here in this area, I believe, is around $83,000, which is like $20,000 above the national uh, average. All right. But if you also look at your area here, you have a high density of union employees. You know, when I say union across the board, you know, that involves everybody. But for us, we do demographics all the time, depending on where we are to see how many members we have that live in an area. So for the construction trades, we have in this area alone, 
uh, almost 200 total out of the 29. Well, between public and private, there's probably 3,000. Oh, yeah, way over. You know, my numbers are being so that you can't argue with. You know, I can make them higher, but those numbers there are still oppressive for this area. You know, I, I graduated in the 80s. And I know people from Valley Central and that, that era, like the Decay Brothers, and Jeff Lewis, Darren O'Banks, who's a big football player here in wrestling. He's a union laborer right now. He's one of your own, you know? But he came through the same way I did. We didn't know about this back then, about the apprenticeship program. So we were lost. When we walked out the door with our diploma, that's what we had was a diploma. So what we're looking for is that 26% that always seems to be missing that's going out the door, you know, to come to us. That way, I look at schools as a natural resource because of what you build, you build the students. But if you can't provide those students after they graduate with an environment where they can grow and live in the community where they have to move out, you lose that as an asset and becomes a liability. Right? You see what I'm saying? So if we can't provide good paying jobs here and $80,000 is the average here, we can argue all day that the average credit for a union tradesperson is $80,000. That's across the board. We can show you that all day. Top earners and, you know, you go to the, like the top 30% or six figures, you know? And then with the way the trades work, we promote from one end. So you're only limited to reach your maximum potential in the trades, your only limitation is yourself. We offer everything to promote you. We're living proof of it. You know, all of us here, you know, 20 years training, working, doing concrete, you know, but you take the steps, you follow the direction, sky's the limit. Uh, the careers, you know, the trades as a career is not a second choice in a lot of situations. That's how it gets looked. It can be a first choice for the right candidates. They say that you, you know, by fifth or sixth grade, you can start determining what career kids are going to be orientated to. So if we can imply implement a program in your high school where we can direct them to the trades, we can eliminate a decade of them out there working minimum wage jobs where, or jobs, period, not careers. You know, once you enter the trades. It's a career, it's not a job anymore. You know, we're we're the A game, we're the you know, the major leagues when it comes to construction, once you get to our level. So a partnership with us is to me on this level for apprenticeship language shouldn't be a big issue as far as where it goes with your bids, because we can show you over and over again just by the fact that the apprenticeship language alone is going to show a cost savings because now you're only dealing with contractors that have the ability to use the apprenticeship program. And as a school, help us train our people, <laughs> you know, by providing us with an access to put them to work. Um, at this time, I'd like to introduce Jessica Blanc. She is in a program with us, just to give you a little quick background, called Sisters of the Brotherhood, because we recognize assets when we see them. Um, the membership that we've had drawn now with our, our females is huge. The growing need for them is huge. And not just because we need women, they bring a different game to it. You know, I used to say, and this is just me talking, if you want to learn how to do something, watch a track guy do it. <laughs> All right, he'll show you the easiest way. But if you want to learn how to do something productive in the right way, watch a team, team of our girls do it because they're competing. And they're not competing, they're working with us through it. You know, it's not, the, they can do it. It's, it's unbelievable, the training and the support that we have for this. It's a real option for women. You know, and when I say that, the reason I say it is because of the equality there. It's 100% equality. And I can stand up here as a carpenter and as a tradesperson and say that we're one of the only organizations that can stand there and say, same pay, same work across the board, you know? And that's huge, that's huge in this day and age. So with that, Jessica. Hi, I, uh, my name is Jessica Bullen. Um, I'm an Orange County resident, and I just wanna speak about my personal experience uh, actually going through the apprenticeship here down the road. 
Um, I am from New Windsor, New York at the moment. Um, I am a union carpenter from Global 279 Hudson Valley. Um, I think my personal experience would really help others um, to understand the vulnerabilities of our system and how we can help young people coming out of school, particularly young women, be proactive and prepared in deciding the course of their lives, their futures. Um, I'm from Columbia County, New York. It's a little upstate. I graduated from uh, Ichabod Crane. I'm from a working class family. Both of my parents were high school dropouts. They got their GEDs, but um, you know, my parents, they were ill-equipped to advise me and my sister as to what we were gonna do after we got out of high school. Um, you know, we kind of ran out of the house at 17 years of age. It was broken family circumstances. It was tough. Um, we both enrolled in college right off the bat. That was what we you know, assumed we were to do. Um, we both got a lot of debt in order to do it. I'm sure a lot of people are familiar with the story. Um, so it's, it was a six-figure, you know, student loan figure. I'm, I'm still paying to this day, and it is what it is, but um, I, I worked really hard. The experience of a working person essentially living in poverty to obtain a degree, it, it's far. It's an insurmountable mountain, and uh, you know, I worked a lot of low-wage jobs to maintain my living arrangements. I lived in a lot of undesirable areas, very dangerous parts of, of Albany at one point, you know, just to kind of get ahead. Um, I think I say these things... Not to make anybody uncomfortable, I just think that these are the real life experiences of probably many people living here in this county. Um, I'm sure there's many, many people who understand um, the struggles, you know. I know in Middletown right here in Orange County, an estimated 15% of people live below the poverty line. And very importantly, uh, that's higher than the national average. And females across all age groups take up the majority of that statistic. Um, even over here in Montgomery, where poverty is substantially lower than the national average, women overwhelmingly fulfill that demographic, according to the uh, census. Um, so in 2014, I graduated from SUNY Albany in 2010. A lot of folks are still kind of recovering from their session. I was really burnt out from working low-wage jobs. Um, women are really always funneled into these service, service economy, jobs with a median annual salary of less than $25,000 a year. And even though I had a degree, I was not an exception to that. So I started reading about the prevailing rate of union construction workers, the amount of money that these folks can make. And now I, uh, I sent out, I, I, I called the Hudson Valley Union Brotherhood Carpenter Training Center, and they were very encouraging. I took the test, I went through their interview process, and I started my apprenticeship. So in 2014, I was sworn in, I became a union sister. Um, at that point, we might have had like Five women or so in my local. I, I had a, a mentor, Sue Schultz. She was from New Jersey. She worked, she worked for over 30 years as a carpenter. She reached out to me and asked me if I wanted to chair my sisters in the Brotherhood Committee, which is a subcommittee. And uh, that program reinforces, you know, recruitment, retention, uh, sisterhood, uh, having, you know, somebody you can call on. If, if there's someone you can talk to, you know, we facilitate conferences, we facilitate uh, just, uh, you know, information. You know, we have many meetings, we meet with one another. Um, and, I, you know, anytime my, my union at this point offers me an opportunity, I always, I guess it, I guess it. Because what I have found is in the trades and the unions, when, when you yes an opportunity, it always turns out to be reciprocating and rewarding, it's always an exceptional opportunity. So, you know, since joining, you know, at, at one point it was, it was hard, but since then, I've been to Las Vegas, their training center three times for our leadership and apprenticeship programs. I've been to Minneapolis and Chicago for the International Women Build Nations Conferences, participated in many professional development leadership trainings at UMass Amherst, uh, AFL CIO conferences in New Jersey, Canvas, a canvas for all the union and worst political candidates. And I went to the, the, the Women's March in 2017, and I marched alongside my union brothers and sisters in Washington, D.C. Um, for my work, you know, I've built concrete forms for West Point's barracks. I contributed to the interior work at Orange Regional uh, Hospital, which is now Barnett Health. Um, barrier parapet on the New Rubinka Bridge most recently. And after all this, I'm now a delegate for my union. Uh, so at this point in 2021, we have 23 women in my local. So at this point, we've jumped, leaps and bounds. 
and 150 statewide, not including New York City. We hold this pre-apprenticeship program for women who are inexperienced on an ongoing basis. We have one starting actually in November. And we have the Career Connections Program. So in closing, when I when I started, when I finished high school in 2004, I didn't really have a clue that well paying construction jobs were an option for me. I thought men could only get these jobs. As far as the guidance my high school offered, there was a total blind spot because construction work was never brought up once. <laughs> and uh, I also thought having a bachelor's degree was some sort of silver bullet to having this fabulous, well-paid job and benefits. And I really want young people to know that there's there are other options. You know, I can only imagine if you think about it, the rising cost of living, living has been further exacerbated by this pandemic. It's very difficult around here to pay the bills. It's a tough area. Um, and there's a lot of high earning New York City residents now designating this county as their primary residence. There's a lot of competition. According to the, Nat Nat the status of women data, if employed women in Newark are paid the same as comparable men, their poverty rate would be reduced by more than half. The poverty among employed single mothers would drop by nearly half. See, unions seek out to directly rectify these disparities. You know, young people are dealing with this cr with crushing socioeconomic challenges that we really can't overlook. So my question to you now is how can we partner together to help our, our people prepare to address these challenges? And what yeses can we need to help these people have like exceptional opportunities in their lives? Thank you. Thanks very much. And then last we have uh, Jeff Tech from the Labors. And we all the trades have these kind of programs for the students as they graduate. I'm a graduate from NFA, you are missing, and Marlboro. Marlboro. We're all from the area, but we graduated and it gave us a career. I went to college, wasn't for me, so I chose a different different avenue. Every high school has that same hurdle. And these are some of the, just some of the programs that are put out there for these students when they graduate and they're not sure which where they're going. Of course, we advocate college. But there are there is going to be a percentage that's not going to go. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, you keep talking. Go for it. Um, I'm not going to keep you guys too too long. I know you've been here long enough. But um, like they said, um, I've been in labor for uh, eight years. I have one of those degrees. Actually, I have two college degrees, and I, I ended up in the, in the trades as well. Um, I just got hired earlier this year to be part of a program uh, from Senator Scoofus, who got a, a grant to create this program. And he gave me the honor of being the director of it. It's called Building Beyond Hudson Valley. Uh, it's an outreach and training program which provides access to high quality careers in the union construction industry to qualified individuals in low income communities. We strive to give opportunities to minorities and females in Hudson Valley through partnerships with the, the Hudson Valley Building Trades Commission, uh, Workforce Development, uh, obviously Senator Scoofus, we are able to create a program for these individuals. Um, the trainees receive enriching job readiness classes, gain knowledge about the crafts, learn the skills needed to be successful in the apprenticeships that they're going to be in and the career itself. Um, the program is designed to create new and lasting relationships, contacts, and support systems. As you can see, we're all part of different trades, but we work together and, and, it, and it just works well in Hudson Valley. You can't say that for many parts of the rest of New York, but Hudson Valley, the trades work well together. Um, Building Beyond Hudson Valley has been granted also a direct entry, unlike the other programs that we talked about tonight. Building Beyond is a direct entry, so when you finish the eight-week program, 160-hour program, you get to choose out of the 13 affiliated uh, trades in the program. I couldn't name them all, but we can get along with the rest of this. But uh, it is a direct entry from uh, the state New York or New York State Department of Labor. Apprenticeship Council, and it's an eight-week program, 180, 160-hour uh, program, where you get hands-on training in person, union hall trips. They were part of my uh, uh, classes uh, trips when we went in. Um, certifications, OSHA training, um, CPR, first aid, uh, and a bunch of machinery as well. Boom list, scissors lift certification. So you don't just come out of the program. Uh, a novice. You have some work related skill sets going into the trade. And it's free. <laughs> and it's free. Well, yeah, that's the biggest one. It's free to the participants in the class. Uh, the grant covers everything 
that the students will need in this program. Um, it's right out of the local 17 training center right in Newburgh, so it's right down the street. And um, and every apprentice class that's in the trades, there is no cost. It's a, like we said in the beginning, it's an earn while you learn. You go to school at night, you go to work in the daytime. I'd like to thank everybody here for giving us that time, giving us a couple minutes. These are just some of the programs I just wanted you guys to hear. We're looking for, we need people to partnership with. Again, we've taken in, we've taken a certain amount of apprentices every year, but if there was more local jobs for local kids, we could take in even more. And we care about the community because we are the community, as you can see. And we're trying to find ways for your students, our children, and other members of the community to live where they work and work where they live. And with partnerships with school boards like yourself, we can expand our programs. So thank you very much for your time. I'm sorry that if we took too much of it, I know you guys had a long night tonight, but thank you very much. This is card for anybody that wants it. Also on the back of it is a Q reader. So if you know anybody that wants to become a trades member, all they have to do is scan that and it brings them right to our website. Anybody who would like to part? Yes. I just have a comment. Um, yes, do you have any questions? Yeah. Yes, uh, please. So I'm a daughter and also a spouse of Local 17. Um, okay. Okay. Um, and I, I know the livelihood and I know the hard work that goes into what you do. And I do also believe in your statistics. Uh, I'm an educator um, in another district. Yes, ma'am. And I do know that there's a chunk of kids that maybe they didn't go to CTEC. They could get into career tech, maybe they at yep. um, or or maybe they just woke up a little bit late. And you <laughs> don't have a, a program around here. So there's one at SUNY Delphi, but then they have to live on campus. Um, so there's no I, orange oh oh you both see that something like an electrical and an HVAC at night. But again, there's no true program for these kids to go into. That um, for the trades. So I, I commend you for your for your outreach. And I would like nothing more to set up a dialogue if you want to on things that we can do with just the Valley Central School District to put something together that it's almost school specific that we can help your students that aren't going to college maybe have a chance of getting into the trades and again work where they live and live where they work. What has worked? Best for us in the past with something like this is a nighttime meeting. Invite parents, and we'll guarantee more trades. We'll bring the big guns, you know, the carpenters, the iron workers, the laborers, electricians, plumbers, type thing. We'll bring big guns and do an informational meeting on what we offer, what we have. Because we, I see when I contact the parents, because you can't talk about retirement. To kids in insurance, <laughs> but you can talk to them about parents. And another thing that I wanted to say about our program and our accreditation, what we're doing with the carpenters, is that two-year degree. We as a union have already said that we will pick up the tab on anyone that graduates with that two-year degree. All right, and we're looking for accreditation of like 20 credits, which is something we already have with Alfred University and Wentworth College, where they give college credits for our apprenticeship program. So basically, your freshman year is done. And then everything else is at a reduced rate. And we're in the process with Dave Wonka and Erica and Dr. Young at um, OCK, where we're putting the classes together now. And the same thing in SUNY Sullivan with Jay and Mara up there. They're on board with it. And we also have bipartisan support on the political level with both senators, Scoopus and Marachuti. And I could just, it'd be easier to tell you which. Assemblymen are on board, <laughs> to be honest, at that point. So, you know, there's a lot more to partner with us down the road. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, one last thing before I uh, get some time for her is uh, I did receive a call from a representative um, from Eastside Solar uh, regarding a solar project on Pice Lane in the town of Walkill. Uh, regarding a pilot agreement that they had reached with the town of Walkill, and uh, all he needed from me was a signature for the uh, school to be part of that. And I said, thank you very much, but the school board has opted out of pilots for uh, um, solar farms, and uh, he wasn't too happy to hear that answer, but I steered him back to the town of Walkill. Thank you about the town. So that's all I have. Thank you. Yeah. Next is the Oxford's delegate. Yes. 
Um, our meeting was October 6th. Uh, it was a virtual meeting. Mary Alice Kovacs from BDAC and Lauren Savino gave a presentation about a lot of their programs, mainly about the uh, Teen Intervene Program, which is an early intervention program for at-risk kids. Um, information, I believe, was emailed to all of you about that. They did speak about forming a possible committee to help rewrite substance abuse policies for um, any districts that were interested. Um, and having some board of ed members from various schools to help shape some of those policies to make them less punitive and more restorative. Uh, they also spoke during the meeting. Uh, Karen Meyer said if you had any legislative platform ideas for the uh, Capitol Conference that's coming up in the new year, that Ops was starting to uh, plan for their appointments with the legislators. The next meeting is November 3rd, and they have some attorneys presenting on how to handle busted social media and misinformation and dealing with the current TikTok trends. And OCs is um, wanted to make districts aware that they're going to be planning um, a capital project to address uh, many areas of concern on their building condition survey or building conditions yesterday. And they are going to be establishing facilities committee if people are interested in that. Um, the next meeting, I told you about that. And John Williams from Middletown uh, is on the NISPA Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Committee. And he did send out a bunch of information via email to all the board members from their list. Anybody have any questions? Thank you, Joe. Next is community participation. Ryan, um, Joe, we'll start with you. Um, yes, so um, I just like, like to commend the middle school on, um, I know lunch has been an issue. I, I'm on your side, eight hours a day, so, uh, and lunch is just an issue everywhere, and I just want to commend the middle school for really trying to navigate these waters of uncertainty and of middle schoolers. Um, so I just want to say thank you for doing that. And also, um, the electives, I'm getting great feedback on the electives. Um, in specific, the esports. Um, as an, as an old person, as my daughter calls me, esports is really um, the new direction. Um, I've been doing a report on how um, their uh, uh, air traffic controllers are actually um, recruiting students who are to do esports in college just because their their eye movements. You know, there's a huge air air um, air traffic control shortage. And how the esports field is really contributing. You know, that's how they're recruiting kids. So I find that we're you know we're ahead of the game in that in that in that field. And then just the high school too. Um, kudos to the administration. The only complaint I got it it was too short. <laughs> so virtual problems it was too short. But I just want to say uh, thank you for pulling that together. It could not have been easy. Yeah, I went to a girls JV soccer game and I was, they were good. I was impressed. I played soccer in high school and I was like, look at them. Oh, they were really well. So that was enjoyable. And also, um, I heard a lot of really great feedback about homecoming from students from freshman to senior. They all loved homecoming, had a great time, were pleasantly surprised. So just a great job. Sure. Um, I've been able to attend many sporting events um, and many homecoming week events. Uh, it's just really nice to stay at every school event. Uh, it's so nice to have a thank you to everyone involved in planning all these to give our kids back to normal. And as well, I attended three football games. And the best was probably the counterpart game. That was the first time I had ever been. And boy, that was exciting. I had to tell you. That was, that was really good. So, uh, next on the agenda is public participation. And we've got none. So we will jump into old business. 
First is the approval of the high school and middle school health director. I'd like a motion to approve. Angela, second. Sarah, all in favor? Opposed? Zero. Next on the new business, uh, can I get a motion for the acceptance of the external audit report for the fiscal year ending June 30th? Sarah, second. Katie, all in favor? Opposed? Zero. Thank you. Next is uh, the acceptance of response to management letter audit report for the fiscal year end June 30th, 2020. Can I get a motion to accept? Katie? Second. Sarah? All in favor? Opposed? Zero. Thank you. Next is the approval of substitute rate of pay increase. Can we get a motion to approve? Sarah? Second. Diana? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? That's zero. Next is the approval of the high school computer aided design course. Motion to approve? Sarah? Second, Angela? All in favor? Aye. Zero. Uh, next is the approval of the Montgomery Elementary School fitness, physical fitness recreation and social emotional, social emotional, emotional <laughs> learning intramurals program. I get a motion to accept. No, I said it. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Katie. Sarah, second. All in favor? I, I just wanted to say something about that. Um, my son's involved in that, and they, those kids, they love it. Oh my, and the amount of kids that are signed up to participate, it's it's a real great thing. A great thing. Yeah. All right. Next is the approval of agreements for UPK services between Valley Central School District and Learning Together in the City's Montgomery Nursery Most Precious Blood School Time Children's Center. And I get a motion to approve. Angela, second. Diane, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Uh, next is the approval of agreement between Valley Central School District and Ziggy's Gymnastics Academy. Can I get a motion to approve? Sarah, second. Angela, all in favor? Opposed? Next is the first reading of the homeschool students' revised policy. I am going to read it quickly because <laughs> it's the first reading. Next time I'm just going to reference, but today I'm going to read. All right, uh, home school students, policy 1741 revised. The Board of Education shall ensure that children instructed at home are taught by a competent instructor and receive an education substantially equivalent to that offered in the district school. Parents, guardians who wish to educate their children at home must submit to the district an individual home instructional plan outlining the educational goals to be met in the course materials and so by uh, to be used each year for the children for the child's learning process. The district may accept or deny, and I hope parents, guardians, must submit quarterly reports which provide the district with the necessary information to make determinations of substantial equivalency and competency of instruction on an ongoing basis. Parents, guardians may appeal the board to the board for a determination by the superintendent or of schools or designating that I have. Is not in compliance with the regulation of the Commissioner of Education. Parents, guardians shall have the right to appeal the final determination of the board to the Commissioner of Education within 30 days of receipt of such determination. Special education, a student with an IHIP who is a resident of the school district and has a disability or is suspected of having a disability, is eligible to receive services from the school district in accordance with law regulation of district policy 4321. Parent, Guardian must request special education services in writing to the board by June 1st, unless the child is first identified and moves into the district after June 1st. In that case, the parent guardian must request the services within 30 days of being identified or of moving into the district. Special education services will be provided on an equitable basis compared to programs and services provided to other students with disabilities attending public or non public schools within the district. There's no requirement that the special education services be provided in the student home. The board will determine the location where the special education services will be available to homeschooled home school students, which could include the site of the home school. The district shall conduct a census and register students with disabilities who reside in the district in accordance with the education law and commission's regulations. Participation in, in extracurricular activities. Students instructed at home by their parents are not entitled to participate in extra scholastic sports. 
commissioner's regulations mandate that all students enrolled in the public school are allowed to participate in interscholastic sports. The district does not permit homeschool students to participate in any intramural sports, extracurricular activities, or other school sponsored district activities, except as provided by the community organizations in district policy 1500 public use of school facilities. Okay, that's that. Uh, next on the agenda is the NISBA 2021 resolution discussion. I'm going to hand it over to Angela. Uh, yep, so I have done several trainings on this, on the resolution. We're going to be voting on Monday the 18th at 4 o'clock. Uh, from what I understand, it's about a 45 hour process. It's done virtually. And um, I'm sure that all of you have gone through 18 proposals. There were several not um, that won't that won't be recommended. Um, so, are there any of the 18 that anyone has would like to contest? Would not like to vote on. I, I was Okay, I will report back on after the after the uh, the meeting on Monday. So that was our last agenda item. Okay. All right. So before we adjourn, I, I do just want to take a moment and thank our technology. I'm sorry, I don't know your name. Colin. 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 Thank you, Colin. Appreciate your support being here. I know you were here last meeting too. And uh, appreciate you guys you know, YouTube and, and being here and helping us out. So thank you for that. Um, okay, so with that, I'm going to adjourn. I'll take a motion to adjourn. Sarah, second. Diane, long favor. Opposed. Adjourn 5 0 at 8 12. Thank you very much.